We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Welcome to F101 Silly Season Edition. Hello, Catherine. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you, Emily? I am wonderful. I'm actually dying. I'm um, at my parents' house in Texas, and it's, I think, 105, but it feels like 115. So that's like 40 degrees Celsius for our Argentine friends. Um, That's gross. Yeah, and I'm I'm absolutely dying. Um, But it looks like you're still at summer camp. I am still at summer camp, still in my room in the one space that has Wi-Fi. It is uh, currently also very hot here, um, but not nearly as hot and not nearly as humid as is where you are in Texas. Um, but it's it's gross for us. And of course, I'm recording the podcast right now, so I can't have my fan on. So I'm just sitting in my long sleeve shirt, hiding my spider bites um, and sweating. Because that's what that's oh what God. life is here here at camp. That's what summer. summer camp is all about. Exactly. That's what camp's all about. Yeah. Bless it. Oh my it. gosh. Oh. Um, and so today we're moving oh. on to talk about silly season. Um, and and what exactly silly season is, because it's something that, you know, we talk about a lot in Formula One, um, but it's also something that if you don't know what it is, um, I will say that if you know sports at all, even if you don't know what that it's called silly season, you know what silly season is, because it's basically that period um it was coined in the UK and it's basically a period in the summer months where it's just known for like frivolous random news stories in the mass media. But for a sports perspective, silly season is just a period in a sports season, whether that's F1, NASCAR, the NBA, the NFL, the NHL, um, or, or pro soccer, um, in, you know, pro, pro football, not in the United States, um, where you have this kind of lullish downtime um, where it's all full of speculation of, you know, where players are, are going to move, where staff and teams are going to be moving for that next coming season. Um, and, you know, Formula One is just, you know, silly season is just a very pre- prevalent portion of the season as a whole. Yeah, it definitely is. And and so normally, like, let's say the NFL, I'd say silly season is probably between regular season and playoffs. That's when, like, all your coaches are fired, your coaches are being hired, They're they're kind of in talks, but they're not because they're, you know in a playoff game so they can't technically talk to them but it's alleged that they're moving somewhere so that's kind of what a silly season would be um but in the context of f1 it happens during the summer break so there's three weeks in august that f1 kind of shuts down there's no work on the cars there's no testing nothing at all and that's when silly season happens that's when the contract you know new contracts um, news is dropped. That's when we hear about principals leaving or moving, key engineers, things like that. That is really when it happens. So it's really interesting in F1 because contracts for the next season are dropped pretty much halfway through a season, not at the end of the season, which makes it pretty interesting. Yeah, it's it's kind of you, you get to a point where you're like, you know, say, for example, last year, Pierre Gasly, who was at AlphaTari in 2022, and we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, the, the timing of, of his move um, once we get into the silliest silly season that sport has seen in a long time. But, you know, he P- Gasly was announced that he was going to leave AlphaTari and go to Alpine, where he's driving now, um, and that happened, and then, you know, he, you have this announcement, and then for what three more months four more months he's still driving for Alphatari. yeah it's super weird and some people find out that they're losing a seat and they don't get a seat for next season or they're like trying to find a seat so then you have people who find out oh I lost my seat with my current team and no one's rehiring me so then it's trying to drive like a madman and do the best you can for the next few months to see if someone else will re-sign you for next season. Yeah. It's a really Which, like weird concept. Yeah. That's actually something that happened in I believe it was 20 2020 
when Perez lost his seat Chaco. at Force India. Yep. When, when Perez lost his seat at For- Force India, um, and so he had to drive like a madman to the end of the season, um, didn't know where he was going to race until he was called up by Red Bull to take Alex Albon's seat. Albon is currently driving for Williams, um, but that move, you know, when, when Red Bull picked up Perez, that move... Um, made Albon not have a seat for a year until he got back into the Williams in 2022. He spent the 2021 season as Red Bull's reserve test driver. Yeah. And so if it just, there's a lot that goes into play during silly season, I guess is what we're trying to say. And it's a little different than most sports. A lot of most sports, it happens like that last week or two of the season going into playoffs right after playoffs And then you have a full true break before your next season, but their break is in the middle of the season. And so you have, you know, end of season implications and, and a lot, a lot going on there. But so like Catherine mentioned, we're going to kind of touch on the 2022 silly season. Personally, we think it's the silliest silly season of all silly seasons that sports has seen. Maybe not ever, but in a very long time. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, when it comes to recent, you know, surprise moves and everything behind it that led to everything that happened, it's kind of one of the craziest things we've ever seen. And I remember I was at camp last year um, when, you know, Silly Season was happening and when all of these announcements were happening within hours, within minutes of each other, and everyone's reactions to everything that we are referring to that we're about to dive into um and it was just it was the funniest thing that people had ever seen um and and this silly season was um what what Emily and I call the Oscar Piastri incident of 2022. Now, Oscar Piastri, who currently drives for McLaren, didn't do anything wrong. Um but we call it an incident because it was that crazy. Yeah, and But the funniest thing is, like, he didn't even start anything. Like, it wasn't even triggered by Oscar. But he, well, his part of it was the silliest, I think, and the craziest part of this whole thing was Oscar. But it was such a domino effect. And just one thing after the other after the other. Because if you think about it, there's only 20 seats. 10 teams, 20 seats. So if one becomes available, most likely it's going to be another driver who's already on the grid not somebody else. So that one seat available gets filled by somebody else that has to get filled by somebody else that gets filled by somebody else. Then maybe they pull somebody up either from, you know, F2 or a reserve driver or something like that. But it truly is a domino effect. It's, it's not very common for just, you know, Oh, one contract is up. So there's just one move because that would trigger a whole domino effect. So last year, Seb or Sebastian Vettel, announced he was retiring and I still remember seeing this come up on Instagram and I like started crying yeah. I don't know why but it was such an emotional video that he posted it was so well spoken he's such a you know well-respected world champion um and to see him announce his retirement in that fashion I I got super emotional but the trigger for all of this to happen the man legitimately joined Instagram to announce his retirement and like the next phase of his life. And, and like, that was just, it, it came as like, you know, he, he's one of those people who was like notoriously not interested in social media. And then all of a sudden Sebastian Vettel has an Instagram account. It was a whole big thing. And then the week of the Hungarian Grand Prix, which as we record this just happened, um, he announced his retirement. So it's about a, a year ago in, you know, in four days of when we were recording this episode. Yeah, it's, uh, it was wild. And For those of you who watch Drive to Survive, you could kind of like see that moment happening because all the drivers start to say like, wait, Seb has Instagram. He has Instagram. He really has Instagram. He's on Instagram. Why is he on Instagram? And then it's the video and like that's the only thing he posted. And it was just, I don't know, it was really impactful to like listen to him talk. And I like I still remember it and I think it'll really stick with me. I miss I miss Seb. I really like him. Yeah, I think that. 
um, Drive to Survive did him a little dirty because they covered, you know, the retirement announcement, but Drive to Survive covered very little of, like, the actual, like, last couple of races and everything that was done. There were some really cool things. And so, not, and that's not a knock to Drive to Survive. One thing that we really want to make clear about Drive to Survive is Drive to Survive is amazing, but pales in comparison to actually watching the sport live and actually experiencing a Formula One season as it happens from week to week. Yeah, definitely. I think one of the things that you're referring to is him leading laps in Coda. Mm-hmm. I I cried. Yeah. I literally cried when I when it was like so to take a few steps back here. He wasn't pitting, wasn't pitting, wasn't pitting. Everyone was pitting. So Vettel I uh, like got to the you know front of the pack and all of a sudden he was leading Coda and he finally broke through a thou- leading a thousand laps right it was like 3500 3500 something- okay yeah. yeah i was going to say cuz it has to be more than a thousand but it was some really crazy big like landmark achievement and he finally got it the year that he was retiring and i just started losing it like i don't know why but it was a really cool moment and i think I don't know if Aston Martin purposely held him out there and didn't have him pit so that he could get this or if it just happened organically, but it was a really cool moment. Yeah, and, I, yeah I, I, I will say I don't think so because there were some some strategy I like to blunders think that in people. I might I, I do too, but I also know that that you know Aston Martin kind of screwed up some strategies for Seb in those last couple of races and we were all really upset because he had been doing really well and then they the, the strategies just weren't there um and it was very upsetting because we all just wanted to after after Vettel announced his retirement we just all wanted to see good things for him and we didn't yeah. want them no I know I just I get the warm and fuzzies and I'm like oh maybe they wanted him to get this achievement <laughs> Yeah, I know they didn't, but yeah. that's that's how I like to think. So yeah, he did, but but then but because that meant that Vettel was going to be opening up one of those twenty seats, that meant that there were going to be some moves happening. And so yeah. July twenty eighth, he announced his retirement. August first, days later, Aston Martin announces that they have signed Alpine's Fernando Alonso to a multi year contract. Fernando Alonso, who is everyone's favorite chaos magnet on the grid. Love, love Alonso. Absolutely love, love him. And I I personally did not see Alonso signing a multi-year contract or moving to Aston Martin. I when when Seb announced his retirement, I was like, oh, Fernando will probably retire this year as well. Like, even though he's already retired once before he'll retire again you know he'll retire again i think but that coming out like three days later i was shocked i was like huh interesting mostly because i was like he is this very certain individual and i want to know how the stroll dynamic is going to be with daddy stroll and lance stroll and fernando alonso like that just to me seemed like a very interesting dynamic yeah um especially based I don't know. on it, like what had happened over the 2022 season and you know Alonzo's dynamic with his teammate at the time Esteban Ocon they did not always see to eye to eye and did not always agree on race strategy and sometimes were racing each other when they probably shouldn't have been um and and so it you know if you watched our our F one uh, our F one hundred one F one episode, we talked a little bit about the dynamic between you know the owner of Aston Martin, who is the father of Aston Martin driver Lance Stroll, um, and you know the, the we ha- we had a lot of questions going into the twenty twenty three season of how Fernando was going to fit into that dynamic, and clearly that has worked out so far you know as we're recording this aston martin hasn't had a a bunch of great races and you know fernando had a lot of strong starts and he was on the podium for a while at the beginning of the the season um he's not there right now but clearly there are some things working out at aston martin with that driver move from fernando who is clearly not retiring anytime soon even though he's in his 40s yeah that uh 
that retirement's definitely not coming. <laughs> Last year, I was no. like, oh, he's probably, you know, done. And then I think, like, those first few po- podiums this year, like, just reignited something. And he's like, all right, where's my next multi-year contract? Like, I'm not going anywhere. So Exactly. And then, and then, so, so we've got Vettel's retirement announcement. We've got the shock move of Fernando moving to Aston Martin. And now here's where silly season got really silly. And there, here's where we start breaking things down, not by day, but by time of day. Um, so August 2nd, 2022, at 5.11 p.m., specifically 5.11 p.m. UK time, Alpine announces Oscar Piastri, their reserve driver, who is a member of the um, Alpine Young Driver team, will be driving for the team in 2023. Not even two hours later. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Completely out of nowhere. No quotes from Oscar. Um, but they announced that. And then at 7 p.m. UK time, Oscar Piastri says, and we quote, and if you haven't, you know, if, if you're familiar with Formula One, you've probably seen this quote around or you've seen the meme of somebody um, asking Oscar to autograph this tweet. But the tweet said, I understand without my agreement, Alpine F1 have put out a press release that I am driving for them next year. This is wrong and I have not signed a contract with Alpine for 2023. I will not be driving for Alpine next year. What a blow. What a <laughs> Like, <moment>. honestly. <laughs> yeah. I still can't believe, like, Hollywood could not write, well, they're not writing right now anyways, but, like, they could not write a better storyline. Like, this, like, you can't make this up. No, the, the 18 hours that it's this insane. was all happening was the craziest moments of social media on all time. I remember seeing, you know, formia, former F1 drivers, F1 personalities. Everyone was just descending upon Twitter trying to figure out what was going on and making jokes. Even um, the um, airline Ryanair was making jokes about this you know, incident. That's how big and how crazy it got. Cause everyone was wondering, you know, um, you know, obviously, um, Alpine is based in France. Um, Oscar is from Australia. They didn't know if Oscar was in Australia at the time or if he was in the UK or if, if he was in France as well. Um, his manager, Mark Weber is a former Red Bull driver. Um, so nobody really knew and everyone was just waiting to see what was going on. And then at the same time that Oscar put out that tweet, Fernando posts a video of himself giving a thumbs up, clearly without referencing the situation, referencing his amusement to the situation, because at the time also, Fernando didn't have the best relationship with his team at Alpine, which was one of the reasons why he decided that he wanted to leave. Yeah, the whole thing is just a little messy. Messy's a good word for it. And and say. you know, if if you've watched Messy's you know, a good word for it. Yeah. Yeah. If you watch Fernando, you know that Fernando is um he tell he 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 does not hold back, especially when he's unhappy with something. And and there were many times where he was not particularly pleased with how things were going with his team at the time. Yeah. Yeah. I just I could not imagine like, like, it's so, I like, I don't even have words for it because it's so wild that Oscar had to come out and be like, yeah, hey, no, no. I'm not driving for them. And to say it in such, like, a harsh way of, like, I am not driving for them, even though I'm part of their young driver program, like, no, that's not happening. And just thinking of, again, going back to the whole concept of silly season, like, Fernando's move was very shocking and out of the blue. Like, no one saw that coming. So all of that happened, and then he still has to drive for Alpine for the rest of the year. Yeah. Like, he's still driving for them. He's moving. He did this, like, not, I mean, it is kind of behind their back, but it all happens, like, in the shadows. These That's how generally these moves happen. And then he still has to drive for them for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. Like that to me, that's the, that is the weird part to me. Yeah. And then, and then two days later, three days later, sorry, um, reports begin to emerge that the reason why Oscar said he's not driving for Alpine is because he's headed to McLaren. But 
at the time, McLaren did not have an open race seat because Lando Norris has been signed until like 2025, I believe 2025. And at the time, Danny Ricardo had had a three-year contract of which he was in year two and 2023 was supposed to be his third year. But as we all know, Ricardo was struggling big time in that car. Um, and that's where, you know, it was like, oh, so Oscar's going to replace Ricardo, which means McLaren has to find a way to break Ricardo's contract so that they can have Oscar in that seat. Yeah, so Oscar kind of like broke, broke it to Danny that he lost his seat. Without officially doing because it. Because without officially doing it, like, it was – because I don't think – because, yeah, I don't know when it actually officially – I mean, we have it in our timeline. But it's super weird how this whole thing happened that – I mean, we all know that Danny was struggling, but none of us thought that they would just end and terminate his contract or find a way out of it. Because those contracts are expensive, and it like they were they're on the hook for what eighteen million dollars or whatever. So that wasn't necessarily what I was thinking when he was like, "Oh, I'm not driving for Alpine." I was like, "Oh, where else would he go?" My money was not on McLaren. Yeah, it was you know l- like you said. The, so allegedly, um, McLaren. Um, paid out um, $18 million of of Danny Ricardo's contract not to drive in 2023. Um, And and that was what enabled them to bring Oscar to McLaren. And it it got a little, it got very messy. Um, Otmar Sapnauer, who is the team principal at Alpine, basically um, said that he expected Oscar to have more loyalty to the team team that brought him into the sport. And as of August 8th of, of last year, he thought that the contract recognition board would recognize whatever agreement that had been signed with Alpine whereas um there was a, a, a story that broke on the 9th of August last year that said McLaren has a valid contract and so both teams went to the contract recognition board um August 24th McLaren and Ricardo announced that they are parting ways or at least that's what McLaren said Ricardo said that McLaren decided to make a change hmm um, and on September 2nd at 2.30 p.m. UK time, McLaren officially won the contract battle and subsequently announced Oscar as Lando's partner for 2023. And as, as we are sitting now, having just watched Hungry, where um, Lando finished P2 and Oscar finished, finished P5, and the week before, um, Lando finished P2 again and Oscar finished P4. So clearly that worked out for McLaren. And um, <laughs> Alpine has just gone off back to back uh double dnfs so not so much for them i'll be struggling a little bit but you yeah know, a lot we'll, of it they'll get back there maybe a lot yeah. of it um so super random tangent here i really want to know like ricardo was double dipping this year he got the eighteen million, and now he's being paid by Red Bull, and he's driving for Alphatari. Like he's double dipping. Yeah, he's gonna you, have a you, great twenty twenty three. Yeah, yeah. R- Ricardo, you know, Ricardo is a fan favorite, as as we as we kind of mentioned in um, F one hundred one F one, and um, beloved by the sport, and we're all very happy to see that he's back. Um, but he also made a very large amount of money to not drive this year. Um, and, and clearly think things have worked out for him. That was that, and, and that whole, you know, what was that a three week period in, in August, that was a, a very, you know, big, you know, moment in formula one. And that wasn't, pardon me, that wasn't even all of the driver changes that happened in, you know, after, you know, for Silly Season 2022. You know, we had Gasly announce the move to Alpine. Um, Red Bull tried to get IndyCar driver Colton Herta um, into that open seat, but they couldn't get a a super license waiver from the FIA. Um, Nick DeVries subbed in for Alex Albon in Monza because Albon had appendicitis and was in the hospital. Um, And he 
he so he drove that Williams and outscored Nicholas Latifi, which basically sealed Nicholas Latifi's fate, um, and he lost his drive. Um, speculation was growing about Mick Shoemaker's seat at Haas, which he ultimately lost to Nico Hulkenberg, who's driving this year, where um, – Shoemaker is um, a reserve driver for Mercedes, and he is learning from Toto um, and will be fine. And then, of course, Logan Sargent, who was driving in F2, um, he was announced as the replacement for Nicholas Latifi. And then at the very end of the season, Ricardo was announced as Red Bull's third driver, which is different from a reserve driver. Um, but he was announced as the third driver, and now, you know, you know, you, you could almost say that that despite the fact that that Ricardo was basically paid by McLaren to not drive in 2023, he kind of made out the best of everyone in the 2022 silly season merry-go-round. I mean, yeah, money-wise, he's still definitely. driving a shit car, but yeah, the Alpine is he, um, or the Alphatari, yeah, sorry, Alphatari. Well. Yeah, it's not a good car. Yeah, I just and again, like so. Last silly season, I think Seb's retirement and Ricardo announcing that he's, like, going home to Red Bull were, like, the most iconic things mm -hmm. that, well, besides the Oscar Piastri of it all, but those were, like, the big announcements that I was, like, emotional about. I don't know why. I'm an emotional. But, like, yeah, like, if you watch like, Drive to Survive, you, you get really, seen, like, you know, exactly what um, he was, you know, his whole journey from leaving Red Bull, which may or may not have been the, the best decision, but he was, you know, feeling very challenged having Max Verstappen as, as his driving partner. Um, and and to, to see, you know, almost full circle where, where he is now. And then, of course, potentially angling for the Red Bull seat in 2025. Uh, there's a lot going on. I'll say four, but that's four. just me. Yes. I don't think it's going to be four. Well, it is 2025. I know, but we can, one can hope and dream. Um, I think that might be a really big internal conflict for me if Danny goes back to Red Bull. Yeah. I don't know what I'd do. You have to get a Red Bull shirt. Like me. Mm. That's pushing it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, oh, I guess we really worries, quick. But um, um, as as we are recording this before silly season we've got obviously ricardo will be finishing out the season at alfatari we don't know what that means for the alfatari seat um for 2024 um we have a lot of speculation we have an emotionally signed contract whatever that means between uh total wolf lewis hamilton and mercedes um but we're recording this before silly season our next episode will be the silly season recap which will drop next week um but emily what are some um predictions that you have for silly season 2023 um before i give you my predictions i think the emotionally signed contract is the dumbest thing i've ever heard in my entire life <laughs> um i just can't get past that coming from toto so i just it's just like i get what he's trying to say but the way that he said it it's just so dumb um so my prediction, and I think I said this in the uh, red flag rundown with talking about Daniel Ricardo. I think with that big change before the summer break, I think we might have a hold off on a lot of moves just because I think people are going to want to see what's kind of happening with Danny. Because if he's driving to either take Checo's spot next year, which I fully believe he is I don't believe it, Horner when he says that their lineup is set next year or if he's driving to keep his seat at AlphaTauri or if he's driving to get a better seat I just think that a lot of things are going to kind of hinge on Danny because Danny's a very good driver with a lot of experience and I think it's going to be maybe wait and see but I think we might hear that Logan Sargent's going to lose his seat. I don't think Williams is going to keep him around. I think they're going to have someone else come in. I mean, he's made it into Q2, like, what, one race this year? And Albon has made it into Q3 with the Williams. So, like, clearly it's the driver. Um, 
I think yeah. we're going to hear news about Logan Sargent for sure. As nice as it's been to have like an American uh, as a driver on the grid, I just I I think our time is up unfortunately. Um I think Carlos it'll be announced that he's going to Audi. I fully believe that he's going to he's going to be the driver for Audi. Cuz he won't stay yes. at Ferrari. He's so frustrated. No. Yeah. No. I think no, it's Oh, the whole Ferrari situation is so frustrating. I I just can't. Yeah. Can't talk but, about it. Um Yeah, he he will leave Ferrari before. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think well, I, especially because Charles is like their golden boy. I think they'll just throw money at him and he'll have to stay. Mm-hmm. Honestly. And they'll promise him that he's their number one driver even though Carlos seems to have better pace and everything but it is what it is yeah we we will talk about that i don't know those are my predictions regularly we'll get to know this i like ferrari but i full heartedly wholeheartedly not full heart wholeheartedly believe that carlos is a better driver than charles leclerc unpopular opinion but it is my opinion um and i get mad at ferrari a lot for treating poor carlos so horribly so i agree um, but yeah, what about you, Catherine? Uh, so I'm glad that you agree with me on that. Yeah, I, I think that silly season is going to hinge on, on Ricardo's performance going down the line. I think our silly season will actually be in November, um, based on what has happened so far. And I also think that the emotionally signed contract between Lewis and Toto and Mercedes um, p- could potentially mean that Lewis has decided that this will be his last contract as a Formula One driver. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. I, I, I accept your prediction. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I don't, we I we think, shall see. I think... I, yeah, I think we're going to get details about the contract. Hopefully. Maybe. Hopefully soon. I don't know. Yeah. Hopefully it's soon. A lot of, it's a lot of I think see. So, speaking of... It is, which is, like, a horrible prediction, but... I think we're going to hear that Schumacher, Schumacher, whatever... I can never say it right, and I say it different every single time I say it, but I think yeah. Mick is going to go to Williams. I could see that. I think that's a... a, a I can see that happening pretty pretty solidly. I think yeah. I think they're done with Logan. Yeah, so. I, I don't disagree. I don't know. But that's the only Yeah, I think that's a a pretty good one. But I don't know about anything else. Yeah. We 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 don't, don't know. know. It it's going to be like the, the, the bomb dropping of Ricardo moving to Alphatari really just put a damper or not a really a damper, but like really quieted down any potential driver moves in a year where we don't have a lot of expiring contracts, unlike last year where we did. Yeah. And I think that's like why and and Seb's retirement too, like that was another seat that had to be filled. I think last year was just a lot and Almost everything last year, we never could have predicted. So that's kind of like how silly season goes, is you never know what's going to happen. Except I do think the Mick to Williams will happen. Yes. If I had, to, if I was a betting woman, that is what I would bet on. Yes. So, I am not allowed to bet on sports. Know. So I don't bet on sports. I'm still not allowed to bet on sports. Um, my cooling off period has ended, so I can. Mm, I still so, can. Hello, family fantasy football league. I, um, a a little background, because I still work in college athletics, I am not allowed to bet on sports. Um, So I I do not. So all of my bets are hypothetical. Um, And that has been this episode of uh, F101 Silly Season on the Going Off Track podcast. Yes, this has been the Going Off Track podcast. Thanks for going off track with us, guys. And we will see you in the next episode.